In Psalm 25, we read, All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep God's covenants. God leads the humble in what is right and teaches them God's way. Grace to you and peace this Lord's Day. Welcome to the YouTube channel for faith support created by the Hyattstown and Clarksburg United Methodist Churches in northern Montgomery County, Maryland, part of the Baltimore-Washington Conference. I'm Dave. I've been serving this parish for over a dozen years now, and we're glad that you've joined us in worship today using the tools of technology as we continue to do our best in caring for one another, being a truly welcoming place, a place that tries to keep you safe if you join in our in-person meetings and provides these opportunities if you're not yet ready to return. Our prayer is that what we offer here and in person will be a blessing helping you to continue in faith, hope, and love as a follower of our Lord Jesus Christ. I invite you to join in praying. Holy God, this is the time when we quiet our hearts and our minds to pay attention, to really pay attention to what you have to say to us today. Fill us with your word and give us understanding by your Holy Spirit that having heard your word, we may live lives worthy of you and please you in every way. Amen. Our first lesson today is from Deuteronomy 30. In God, all you do shall prosper abundantly. Your family will grow, your herds will multiply, your harvests will overflow. It pleases God to do this for you, even as it has always pleased God. So keep covenant with God, living in those ways you already know are pleasing to God. Study the ways of God. Make sure you're fully depending upon God. The things God requires are not too difficult, nor are they beyond your understanding. God has not kept them hidden in the divine realm out of your sight or understanding. They're not hidden in lands far away, so that you have to travel far to study them. No, we have knowledge of God's will. You have been taught them so that you recite them and are devoted to them. From Amos chapter 7. The Lord speaks when we're paying attention. And I saw a wall built with builders' skills and tools. And I saw the Lord standing beside, examining the work. And the Lord asked me what I saw. I replied that I saw a plumb line in his hand. The Lord said to me, It is time. The handiwork of my people is to be examined. This test will be pass or fail. Time is up. Do my people honor me? Places of worship and rituals that are rotten will be ruined. Not even the king is exempt from judgment. Hearing this, the priest at Bethel, named Amaziah, sent a report to the king, named Jeroboam. He said, This man named Amos is an agent of sedition. He's plotting insurrection from right here within the heart of the nation. This will bring ruin to our land. Here are his words. Jeroboam has been sentenced to execution. Israel has been sentenced to exile in a distant land. Then Amaziah told Amos, You best hightail it out of here. Go back to your home in Judah. Preach and earn a living there. Henceforth, you're unwelcome here at Bethel. This is where the king comes to worship, our national shrine. Amos replied, I was not born to a family of preachers. I'm a simple farmer and rancher. It's God who called me away from my livestock, saying, Go preach to my people Israel. So this is what the Lord has to say. You say, Don't preach in judgment of us. Therefore the Lord has this to say. Your wife will be so desperate she would do anything to survive. Your children will die at the hand of foreign armies. Your land will be taken and sold, acre by acre. And you, you will spend your last days as an exile in a land that doesn't know God. For surely, Israel is going into exile. Our psalms today are used as part of video two, our prayer and praise video today. So I invite you to watch for them there.
from the New Testament letters, the letter of Paul to the church at Colossae. From Paul, apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and from Timothy, also a follower of the Lord, to Christ's people at Colossae, followers faithful to him. May God our Father bless you and give you peace. Whenever we pray, we never fail to thank God for you, now that we've heard of your faith in Christ Jesus, and of the love you have for all his people, because of our heavenly hope safe in heaven. You learned of this hope proclaimed to you as good news, which you received as a trustworthy message, and it is now bearing fruit and growing, as it does throughout the world. So also now it does with you. Beginning the very first day that you heard of God's loving kindness and understood what that loving kindness really is. It is just what you learned from Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who as a minister of, of the Christ faithfully represents us and who brought the report to us concerning the love you have, the Spirit inspired in you. Therefore, we, from the very first day we've heard of it, have never ceased praying for you or asking that you be filled with the knowledge of the will of God, which comes through all true spiritual wisdom and insight. Then you will live lives worthy of the Master, and so please God in every way. Your lives will be fruitful in every kind of good action and grow into a more complete knowledge of God. You'll be made strong at all points with the strength worthy of the power manifested in his glory, strong to endure with glad patience whatever might transpire. And you will give thanks to the Father who made you fit to share the lot which awaits Christ's people in the realms of light. For God has rescued us from the tyranny of darkness and has removed us into the kingdom of his Son, who is the embodiment of his love and through whom we have found deliverance in the forgiveness of our sins. Skipping just a few verses in chapter 10 of Luke, from where we left off last week, we start today with verse 25. Someone who had extensive training in Torah asked a question to see how Jesus would respond. What works are required in order to gain eternal life? Jesus turned it back to him. How do you read the law? He answered, fully love God with every bit of who you are, so that you love your neighbor as much as you love your very self. Jesus replied, that's a great answer. If you do this, you'll have life. The Torah expert, though, wanted to discuss it further. His follow-up question was, who is my neighbor? So Jesus told a parable. A man was walking a dangerous road, and thieves ambushed him. They beat him up, took everything he had, even his clothes, and they left him to die. Now, as it happened, a priest was following him on that road, and noticing him, kept his distance and kept on going. A bit later, a Levite did the same. Now, a Samaritan on that road took notice and had compassion. He went to the injured man, treated his wounds, and placed him on his donkey, and took him to an inn where he cared for him. The following day, he paid the innkeeper in advance to take care of him longer, and if the bill turned out to be even greater, he promised to pay more when he returned. Then Jesus asked, Which of the three was a neighbor to the man in need? Well, the the Torah expert said, the one who was merciful. So then, be a good neighbor. That's what you're to do, Jesus said. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our hymn for this segment, If Thou But Suffer God to Guide Thee. It's number 142 in our hymnal.
I invite you to pray with me. Give your church, O God, the grace to serve you with courage, that our lives may be a witness to your compassion and our actions a testimony to your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Closing tune for this segment, Rise Up, O Men of God. Mm -hmm.